So on the test, you'll go to the class website, page three, and then you'll download all the eight files. Now, most of the files would be the same except for the buttons will no longer say practice. So again, on the test, you'll download the files again, and they'll no longer say practice on them. And then you'll go to beta appinventor mit.edu beta app inventor mit.edu if your previous project loads you click on my project to get back to the main menu so my project you click new test click ok remember it has to be one word and then I'll drag five buttons in one two three four five and then for each of them, I'm going to upload an image. Okay. So I see practice button one goes in button one. And then practice button two, upload, choose file, goes in two, click OK. And then practice button three, upload, choose file, practice button three, click OK. And then image, upload, choose file, practice button 4, goes with 4, click OK, and choose image, upload, choose file, practice button 5, click OK. And now I have to do some cosmetic cleaning up. So um, let's take a look at the buttons we loaded. So the button 1 is the main screen, and then button 2 is the question, button 3 is the answer because we're making a flashcard app, and the question the answer. So that's why there's five buttons. Question, answer, question, answer, and button one is the start screen. So I'm going to now hide all the other buttons except for the start screen. So I'm going to click. Oh, before that, I, I do that. Do you see that um, there's text on each of these? So that I need to do some quick cosmetic fixes. I'm going to go to text color here and click none. And I'm going to button two. Text color, but not green, that'd be even worse. None. And then button three, text color, none. And then button four, text color, none. And then button five, text color, not green, none. There we go. And now I'm going to hide them. So I'm going to click on button two, and we're going to go visible here, and go hidden. Button three, visible, hidden. Button 4, visible, hidden. Button 5, visible, hidden. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now look for my sounds. So I click over here to media. And not player, but sounds. I'm going to drag sounds onto my thing twice. It'll show up down here. And it also shows up out here under your kind of your contents, which is like your table of contents. So your components. I'm going to click on sound 1 upload and there'll be a sound file that's called sound one so sound one goes to sound one click ok and click sound two upload and then look for sound two that's sound two and you'll see sound one's going to play on button two sound two is going to play on button four that'll be you'll see what i mean later on that. and i have my buttons uploaded now the only thing left is the icon so the icon I now go to screen I go to screen and I don't do anything with background I go all the way down here it says icon I'm going to upload choose file and this is the little button that shows up on the main menu of your iPad or tablet and click OK open OK and now I'm ready for block editor so I'm going to click open block editor click keep and then double click to open it so remember, yeah, I have to open it, and then I have, I have to usually execute the file. So if it says save, click save. And if it says open, click open. And it'll take a moment. Sometimes a little longer than a moment. And you remember, you can always switch back from the block editor back to the screen. So if both of them will open up down here. So now there's a little uh, Java, a little coffee icon. So now it's open. So I'm going to go to My Blocks. And I'm going to click on when button one is clicked and I'm going to just actually pull them all out so click on button three when button three is clicked and just get it done so I, have, I can see all of them at once and space it out okay. 
So I got button 1, button 2, button 3, button 4, button 5. Now I'm going to go back to button 1. I'm going to look for the blue button that says button 1 visible. I'm going to drag that here. And then I'm going to go to button 2 and go for when button 2 is visible. I'm going to drag that here. So what I want to do is this. Button 1 is start screen. So when the start screen is clicked, I want to turn the start screen off. I'm going to go to built-in, go to logic. And we're in computer language, off means false. And then I can actually just control C, paste, and control V. Drop that over here and switch this over to on. So when I click button 1, button 1 is going to be off, and button 2 is going to be on. And then when I click button 2, I'm going to control C here and paste. And when I click button 2, I want button 2 to turn off. So remember what that means. When I click, so button 2 is already on. So when I click on button 1, button 2 is already on. And when I click on button 2, that's like the question where there's a flashcard out. And then click on the question. I want button 2 to turn off. And then I want to, so I'm going to go button 3 look for the blue one. It says visible. Drag that over here. And now I can go up here, see that copy, control C, control V. I'm going to turn button 3 on. So that was the question screen. And the button 3 is the answer, right? It's a flashcard. What's the term? And here's the answer. And so I'm going to go to button 3, copy, paste. But I got to set this to false. Because remember, when you click button 3, it's going to turn off. And button 4 is going to turn on. And I'm going to copy this, control V. And this is where the first sound should play. So the first sound is going to play here. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Back up. First plan was play on button two. Because um, button two, so let me explain why. And I, my mistake is so when I click on the start screen, it's going to show the question. And when I click the question, it's going to show the answer. So that's why it says button three visible here. And when the answer is shown, that's when I want to play the sound. I want to play the sound with the answer. Okay. So button three is going to show button four. Copy button four here. Button four here. It's going to show button 5, so button 5 visible. Okay, and then I'm going to set this to off. Copy this, paste this here. True. So, remember, button, f so when I clicked on button 3, which is the answer to the first one, it's going to bring up button 4, which is the next question. And when I click on the next question, it's going to show the answer, which is button 5. And when I show the answer, I want the next sound to play. So sound play here. Let me put on this one. And let's copy button five, which is the last answer. When button five is off, I'm gonna have it loop back to the start screen. So I'm gonna click on button one here, drag that over here, click true. So let's review what we have to, to for an A on the test. What you need to do is have Button one click, button two click, button three click, four click, five click, and then you see in each one you have the current button and the next one. So button one, the button two, and button two you have two, then three, and then three you have three and four, but four you have four and five, five you have five, and then one to loop it back to the start screen. And then all of them are false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, and then the first sound button goes in button two, and that'll be on the handout. And then the second sound button goes in button four because those are the those are the two answer screens that call up. Now, if you show me if you show me this, and sorry for the resolution screen, if you show that you're all done with the test. But um, if you have time, if you want to see how your thing looks, you click new emulator. Now it's ready. It turns green. And when it's ready. Let's take a look. So I'm going to click here. Click on this. What is the treme? Athenian warships at the time are called triremes. And then I click the next question. What is the phalanx? The Macedonian phalanx is Philip's most powerful tool of war. Click on that. Back to my start screen. Now, if you were trying to connect this to um, a real device, what I would have done is I would connect to Wi-Fi. And if I done that, what we'll do is I click yes. And it will create a code, and then you type that code onto your iPad or smartphone, and then it will sync up. And then once it's synced up, then you go back to your um, main app adventure screen, and you click here, and you click package, and you click download to the connected phone, which is connected through your Wi-Fi. You have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. 
Now, if you're trying to download this to as a file to load to the Google um, Play Store, then you download the file as a package file, and your app is ready to go. So now you've made a fully functional app.